Today in this video, we're going to talk about limp wristing and how it can have an effect on several different negative issues when you're firing a semi-auto. Thanks for joining us today on Shoot of the Series. My name is Ed Thorell from Firearms Education and Training. We'd like to give a big shout out to all of our YouTube subscribers and thank you for sticking with us, helping us gain good traction. If you haven't already, hit the like, hit the share, and also hit that bell for instant notifications. Also, come check us out and support us on Patreon. Now today, we're going to talk about a phenomenon known as limp wristing. This is a term that's been around a long time, so no snickering. This is something, it's a thing. Now, limp wristing can cause a host of problems when you're dealing with failure to eject, um, failure to feed, or also a failure for your slide to lock back on your last round. And a lot of it has to do with the fact of not having the correct form of your grip, and more importantly, locking out your wrist. So today, we're going to spend some time with our 1911. And just like always, we want to show clear and safe. No big surprises today. So with limp wristing, you're going to find that this is a phenomenon that's very, very common with compact guns. Some of that reason is because it is a compact gun, you have less length of travel when the slide reciprocates back and forth. So because of that, you've got to be very careful to lock out your wrist. Now, one of the things that we like to advise is, for starters, make sure that when you are getting a good grip for your handgun, Make sure, first of all, you've got your thumb extended, pointing to the target, and you're going to notice by pointing my thumb, it helps lock out my wrist. That's exactly what you want. So, I tell my clients to push the gun as far away from you as possible, because your wrist is a pivot point, your elbows are pivot points. The only thing that you want to have anything pivot is in your shoulders. You want to lock out, you want to lean into the gun, keep your nose over your toes, push the gun as far away from possible, and lock out that wrist so that the only motion during recoil is going to, gun is going to come straight up, your shoulder is going to rotate a little bit, and then because you're leaning into the pistol, it's going to come right back into target. Now, it's important to understand that your wrist acts as a pivot point, and if you don't lock it out, your wrist, being limp, can accept some of that energy from the slide reciprocating to the rear. Now, what's important is if you want to get clean ejections, um, clean feeds, and also have this lock open on your last round, you have to have your, lock, your wrist locked out. The reason for this is, is if you let that wrist accept some of that energy when it's limp, this is not going to be able to travel all the way to the most rear part that it's supposed to. It's going to come up short. So if you don't lock out your wrist, some of that energy is just a little bit there is going to soften the ability of the slide to reciprocate all the way to the furthest most point which I call the firewall. It should snap back all the way, nice and smartly, and be able to go forward. And if your wrist is not locked, it won't happen. So once again, when you grip, point your thumb to the target and push the gun as far away from you as possible so that you're locking out your wrists and locking out your elbows. This is gonna be a great way to uh, ensure that when you're firing, this isn't going to happen. That's the number one reason that you're going to have an issue with, with having all those failures. So stick around. We're going to run it. We're going to see if we can induce that malfunction just so you can see what it looks like. All right, you're going to load two rounds, try to induce a malfunction. Okay, you'll notice, 
because of this we didn't get a complete ejection or a complete feed. It, it didn't have enough energy to return the slide all the way forward. Okay, also with my wrist totally relaxed, it locked back, but you were able to see how the, it, it, on the first round, how it didn't clear. We had to push it back into battery because of the energy that was absorbed in the wrist. So that's one of the issues you can have with limp wristing. So I'm glad we finally had a chance to illustrate that. Um, it's also kind of fun bringing out the 1911 because it doesn't get nearly as much use as it deserves. So once again, I'd like to thank all of our followers on YouTube. Check us out on Patreon. And on behalf of Shooter the Series, I'm Ed Thorell from Firearms Education. Y'all take care.